Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and we've got to talk about the earnings that came out today because they provide a lot of insight into what's going on with the U.S. economy. We'll also talk about what's going to move the markets on Friday, including the ongoing debt limit talks. So let's get into it. The first thing we need to discuss are Dollar Tree's earnings. Now, Dollar Tree is kind of an interesting company because as we get closer to a recession, generally companies like Dollar Tree will perform quite well as their U.S. sales will rise as more and more people shop at discount retailers such as Dollar Tree in order to save money during a recession. And it was really unclear just exactly how Dollar Tree would fare. Most people thought at least sales would be up. And while sales were up, Dollar Tree shares plunged after the company missed on earnings. They also slashed their full year profit outlook. Revenue was a beat at $7.32 billion versus $7.28 billion expected, but earnings were a miss at $1.47 versus $1.52 expected. As expected, same-store sales were up 4.8% compared to an expected uptick of 3.6%, so a beat on that as well. But following the disappointing earnings, Dollar Tree lowered their profit outlook for the year to a range of between $5.73 to $6.13, which was down from the prior range of $6.30 to $6.80. The lower outlook was attributed to elevated shrink or items that were damaged, lost, or stolen, as well as a shift in the product mix to consumables, which carry lower margins. So as it turns out, Dollar Tree's earnings were very similar to Target's earnings. Both Dollar Tree and Target attributed their lower margins to a significant rise in theft, especially from organized crime. And I talked about that in a prior video, the issue with organized crime. And both Dollar Tree and Target attributed a decline in margins to consumers spending more money on groceries and less money on other things such as electronics and clothing. And that's kind of the same problem Dollar Tree has, is as consumers spend more money on food and less money on all the other stuff that Dollar Tree sells, this decreases their margins, which in turn hurts their earnings. Even though, as expected, sales were up. Sales beat estimates. Unfortunately, the lower margins actually wiped out that increase in sales and were down significantly. Dollar Tree's shares were down 12% on the day. And it just goes to show that even if we do enter a recession, it's going to be very different from the recessions that are from any recent memory. This is going to be a lot closer to the recessions that we had during the 1970s when inflation was quite high and the Fed was raising interest rates. The problem is normally during a recession, consumers will cut back on spending, but they generally just continue to buy what they've always bought. They just shift it to lower priced items. This time around, though, it looks like consumers are hurting so much that they're just buying groceries and they're buying very little things outside of their basic necessities, which is making this downturn in the market very different from the ones that we've had in recent memory. Now, another retailer, Best Buy, also reported earnings, and they beat on earnings, but the CEO said shoppers are showing recessionary behaviors. Consumers are spending less money in their stores, and that resulted in Best Buy missing on their sales estimates. They did reaffirm their full year outlook, though. So Best Buy was in the exact opposite boat of Dollar Tree. While Dollar Tree sales went up, their margins went down, causing earnings to go down. Best Buy was the reverse of that. Best Buy sales went down as consumers spent less and less money on electronics, but their margins increased, which in turn helped their earnings increase. Best Buy shares were up about 3% on the day. And another retailer, Gap, also reported earnings as just like Best Buy, they reported a huge increase in margins. Unfortunately, all four of Gap's brands reported declining sales once again, but because of the increased margins, the company's net losses have narrowed. Gap was up 13.8% as of the recording of this video in the after hours. 
Although it should be noted that they hit a new 52 week low on the day. So what we're seeing for the overall economy is a shift in sales from electronics and things that people don't really need to more and more groceries and other necessities. And as well as that, we're also seeing increased margins in the things that people don't need and decreased margins in the pe things that people do need. So groceries and other things that people are actually buying, consumer uh, consumables, those have decreased margins, even though people are spending more on them, which are increasing sales, but hurting earnings. And on the flip side, things that people don't really need, sales are going down, but because of increased margins, earnings are going up. So very interesting tale here between two different things that are happening in the retail sector. Now, another company reported earnings on Wednesday, and that was NVIDIA. And we all know they had tremendous earnings beat and in addition, almost doubled their outlook for the year. And with NVIDIA's nearly 28% rise on the day, NVIDIA is nearing elite trillion dollar market cap club of Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and NVIDIA's blowout earnings even lifted AMD while other chip makers such as Intel fell. Shares of AMD were up 11% on the day. But unfortunately, the rise in AMD may have been misguided. The AI chip boom is pushing NVIDIA towards that trillion dollar market cap, but it won't actually help Intel and AMD. NVIDIA's sales are up because of spiking demand for the graphics processors or GPUs that NVIDIA makes, which power artificial intelligence applications like those at Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI. Now, historically, the most important part in a computer or server has been the central processing unit or CPU. And that market was dominated by Intel with AMD as its chief rival. But with the advent of AI applications that require a lot of computing power, the GPU is taking center stage. And the most advanced systems are now using as many as eight GPUs to just one CPU. And NVIDIA currently dominates the market for AI GPUs. So instead of millions of CPUs, you'll have a lot fewer CPUs, but they will be connected to millions of GPUs. And that's one reason why NVIDIA's data center business grew 14% during the first quarter versus flat growth for AMD and a decline of 39% for Intel. So if you're looking at buying some chip makers for the AI play, NVIDIA is definitely the way to go. Buying AMD's rise is probably not the smartest move, given the fact that AMD actually makes a lot more money from their CPUs rather than their GPUs, and AMD's GPUs really aren't that well suited for AI. NVIDIA is definitely dominating the market here. So if you're going to buy an AI chip company, NVIDIA is definitely the one to buy, not AMD. Now let's talk about what's going to move the markets on Friday, and it's mainly the debt ceiling deadline that's coming up. Debt ceiling negotiations have intensified as Fitch ratings warning on the U.S. credit adds urgency. But on Thursday, negotiators appear to have made little discernible progress in more than a week of near round-the-clock talks. Yesterday, Fitch put the United States AAA credit rating on negative watch, citing the debt ceiling fight. Fitch said the rating watch negative reflects increased political partisanship that is hindering reaching a solution to raise or suspend the debt limit despite the fast approaching X date. The so-called X date, which is when the U.S. could default on its debt, could arrive as early as June 1. And Fitch noted that they still expect Washington officials to arrive at a resolution before the deadline. Unfortunately, while the debt ceiling talks have made progress, the House, which is Congress, they will leave town with no deal. They're going to fly out for their three-day weekends and end negotiations until Tuesday. The decision to let members fly home for the week is a tacit acknowledgement by House leadership that a deal to raise the debt ceiling does not appear to be imminent. Meanwhile, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Wednesday that she was already seeing some stress in the financial markets driven by fears that the U.S. could stumble into its first ever debt default. 
The debt default ceiling related stress was affecting treasury markets in particular. Keep in mind that the last time the U.S. credit rating was downgraded was in 2011. And at that time, Congress did pass a bill to raise the debt limit on time without a U.S. default. Still, the credit rating was downgraded a few days later. And that ended up resulting in a 15% drop in the stock market in just one month. Now, should the U.S. actually default, it is estimated that the U.S. stock market would fall 35% in one month. So just because we reach an agreement on the debt limit and we get the debt limit raised does not necessarily mean that we're out of the woods yet. The U.S. credit rating could still get downgraded. Keep in mind that a negative credit watch is the first step in downgrading the credit rating of the United States. Essentially, this has to be given at least 24 hours in advance notice, and it's essentially a warning that, hey, Fitch is looking at possibly downgrading the U.S. credit rating, but the stock market would not actually fall unless the U.S. credit rating actually got downgraded. Still, any additional news about this that comes out on Friday is expected to move the market up or down. And with uh, Congress going on break for three days, uh, more than likely, we have a little bit of a pullback on Friday after Thursday's massive run up in the S&P and NASDAQ. And just keep in mind that even if we do raise this debt limit, we could still fall another 15% after that if. Fitch actually downgrades U.S. credit rating. You should also keep in mind that Moody's, which is another credit rating service, Moody's has also said that they are looking to possibly downgrade the U.S. credit rating as well. So these are all things that could cause downturns in the market. Obviously, the market's extremely bullish right now. And so long as everything gets resolved and we don't actually get a downgrade, the stock market should continue to rise. I just want you to be aware of some things that could cause the stock market to go down. So overall, bullish but cautious. That's where I stand right now. Bullish but cautious. By the way, if you guys want to know what we're buying and selling and how we're making money as the market goes through all these crazy swings with all these debt limit talks and earnings and all this stuff, Come join us in our We Profit Day and Night Coaching Program, where I'm going to teach you how to trade options so that you can make money no matter whether the market goes up, down, or even trades flat. And we're making money in there every single day. And right now, we just opened up monthly memberships once again, but we only have a few slots left for those. I do expect those to fill up fairly quickly. So if you want to learn how to trade options, come get in at the monthly rate. All you have to do is schedule a call with my onboarding specialist and he will get you into the program. You can schedule a call with the onboarding specialist as well as find out more about the program at weprofitdayandnight.com. That's weprofitdayandnight.com. If you got a lot out of this video, then be a good friend and share this video on your social media pages so that others will know what's going on in the market as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you missed yesterday's video where I went over NVIDIA's earnings as well as some other issues going on with the economy, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.